Trial of the Millennia by Stanley E. Anderson No, he shouldn't have risked it. But the curl on the wave was too perfectly formed. The hollow tube within, glowing as fiery, liquid, translucent light, rushed in from all sides. It beckoned explorers to glide rapidly along the ephemeral walls, just ahead of its encroaching fuse-like collapse into chaotic foam. How could any fleet-footed creature resist the temptation and exhilaration of that relentless hunt, the throbbing, pursuing energy rising from the heart of the abyss, deep beneath the surface, finally stretching its undulating fingers up and reaching out to encircle and consume anyone too slow-witted or unnimble of limb to outmaneuver it? The intensity of waves like this were rare. One could expect to see a set like this only once every decade or so. This was a chance not to be missed. So without thinking about how perilously close he was to the edge, he grabbed his surfboard and paddled over to a growing hump on the surface that heralded the promise of a ride on the perfect wave that every surfer dreams about. And he was not denied that dream ride. So skilled in the art was he and so smooth was the rush down the slanting surface his board glided along that he actually closed his eyes, one arm outstretched, the other holding on to the rim of his hat to keep it from being tossed away in the wind, while his other senses breathed in the tingling ecstasy. It was his undoing. When, head tilted back, he leisurely reopened his eyes, he looked into the sky and saw what he must not see. There, just above the horizon, he made out the twinkling of the blue star, the third planet with its solitary moon hovering in front of it, the one from which he and all the other gods had been banished ever since the birth of the infant in the stable. They were no longer the rulers of the lowest spheres, but were allowed to stay, under their own recognizance, always on the far side of the sun, where they might no longer have any influence on or physical recognition by the inhabitants of Earth infractions would incur the severest of penalties. Of course, he swerved back as quickly as he could to conceal himself behind the rim of the solar disk, but he had potentially revealed himself in that brief moment. Pulling his hat down over his eyes, he sighed and pictured in his mind the headlines that were sure to appear on the front page of the Olympus Herald if his presence had been detected on Earth. Mercury on trial! Stanley couldn't decide if he should call it serendipity or a nightmare come true. The opportunity of a lifetime to photograph a total eclipse of the sun during the height of the eleven years' solar activity cycle had presented itself to him, and he had taken advantage of it. With all the things that had gone wrong, it was astounding that he was able to get anything at all, but he had managed to get one click of the shutter button before the makeshift tripod had collapsed and that one bit of film had produced a single, amazingly detailed photo of the sun's corona surrounding the black hole of the moon's eclipsing disk. It was a picture to be prized for its brilliance and clarity, and would have made the expense of the trip worthwhile, except for one thing. It must surely be a trick of the light, or a chance positioning of the gaseous flares. But right there at the edge of the corona was a nearly perfect silhouette of a sleek bronze figure wearing an odd-looking brimmed hat and little wings on his ankles riding what looked to be a surfboard. Would anyone ever believe that he wasn't just trying to show off his Photoshop imaging editing skills with a silly trick? What could he do with this otherwise fantastic photo? End. Afterward, about the origin of this story. Years ago, on the now-closed Into the Wardrobe C.S. Lewis website forums, several members conducted a fun activity where, each week, one person would post three random words, and the participants would try to write a short, short story that used all three words. One of the weekly challenges had the three words heart, surfboard, and serendipity, and my entry for those three words was the story I have read aloud here. But the really interesting part is that shortly after I posted the story, Someone else posted the incredible image of an actual solar flare shown at the end of this story here. Incredibly, it almost perfectly fit the story I had written with no hint of having seen the image ahead of time. It was an amazing thing. That is all.